This is Caleb Chen from Private Internet Access, and today I'm speaking with Jonathan Hall, the head of desktop at Private Internet Access, about some of the newest features and functions added to the PIA desktop client. Jonathan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. We're very excited to have you. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, this is my baby, and I love to talk about this. <laughs> Perfect. Firstly, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and the steps in your career that led you to your current position? Yeah, so I've been taking apart computers since I was little. Um, when I went to college, I actually got a degree for chemical engineering, just because I didn't really feel, feel like the computer major suited me that much. Um, I haven't used it since then. It usually surprises people to hear about it, and I kind of forget about it myself sometimes. Um, computers have always been my passion. I started programming uh, when I was relatively little. Um, so after college, I ended up finding a software job with a little startup company um, north of Indianapolis. Um, from there, I went to a larger telecommunications company uh, still here in Indianapolis. Um, and after that, I found my way to PIA. Um, at that point, I was working on what is now the current desktop client. At the time, it was a research project. Um, and since then, I've been privileged to work with the amazing team that we have. Um, and I, I love doing what we do. That's great to hear. Um, here's a quick one. Do you prefer light mode or dark mode when it comes to oh. the PIA client? Dark mode, no contest. <laughs> I hear you. Um, on a similar vein, do you prefer Windows, Mac, or Linux? Oh, that's easy too. Uh, Linux, without a doubt. Um, if you look around my house, I mean, almost everything is Linux. I've got a few machines running some FreeBSD stuff. Um, most of my machines lately are running Debian, but I have plenty of other stuff set up too for testing PAA. Uh, we tested on a wide variety of Linux distributions, so we always have a lot of machines set up for that. Um, for work, I tend to bounce back and forth between all three platforms pretty regularly. I have plenty of Windows machines set up, and uh, my daily drivers are usually the Mac. Um, but I don't really, for work, I spend uh, a lot of time on each one of those. So, between uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux, PIA now has feature parity across all the desktop clients. What was it like to achieve this momentous goal? That was really challenging. Um, that was one of our goals from day one to have complete feature parity across all the platforms we support. It was really challenging to do, but it's very satisfying to see the result. Um, as a Linux user myself, uh, feature parity is very important to me, especially because at work I do bounce around between platforms so much. It's important to me that the software I use across those platforms is more or less the same. Um, and we ran into all kinds of challenges while we were developing that, um, that we ended up having to handle in platform dependent ways. Um, one of the key things that we run into all the time is firewall uh, implementation on each platform. Um, all three platforms have different firewalls, and not only that, they also model the basic concepts of firewalling very differently. So we frequently have to come up with some sort of common ground that we can implement across all three platforms, then figure out how to implement that three times across each firewall backend. Um, we even ran into lots of other surprising details like uh, cosmetic issues that we ended up having to make platform dependent in order to get a similar experience across all three platforms. Uh, one of the things that sticks out to me was uh, the pop-up dashboard in the corner of the screen, making it unfold and expand smoothly across all three platforms was very challenging because their window managers all work differently. Um, the macOS window manager is synchronous while the other two are asynchronous. Um, and the way we clip that rounded shape is very different across platforms. Um, it's, it's subtle stuff like that that we probably wouldn't have foreseen going into it and you might not notice it, when it does work well across platforms, when we were in the middle of it, um, it was pretty challenging for us to come up with those solutions. So, of all these features, which is your favorite feature on the PIA desktop client? You're probably getting this by now, but I like challenges. So, split tunneling was definitely my favorite feature that we've ever done. Um, we, like I said, we were committed to supporting this with feature parity across all three platforms. Uh, which made it even more challenging because we had to come up with a user experience that was similar across all three platforms that we could implement using three completely different backends. Um, but fortunately, I work with an amazing team of engineers who were up to this challenge. Um, we explored a lot of different approaches for these different platforms, did a lot of research and groundwork to begin with, and um, we ended up selecting what we felt was the best approach for each platform, both on the backend standpoint and from the front end to make sure that we could achieve similar front end user experiences. Um, one of the guys on my team that you may see lurking on Reddit sometimes, John did an amazing job researching all those alternatives and then implementing them. Um, and he spent a lot of time in uh, 2019 
implementing much of that feature. Um, and the other person on my team, you might see lurking too, Honor laid an excellent UI on top of that. Um, and even parts of that UI ended up being platform dependent. Um, in particular, the way you select applications is different across platforms. Um, but I think the end result we came up with is outstanding. And it really feels like the same feature across all three platforms. Well, let's talk about a feature that uh, is very important, but most people might not ever use. Um, what accessibility features does PIA have integrated into its desktop client? Yeah, accessibility is a hard requirement for us, as I think it should be for modern software. Um, but it wasn't really something I had a lot of experience with before I started at PIA. Um, and we've spent a lot of time ensuring that every part of the program is accessible. I mean, even every little detail, like every little label or every badge that could show up on a country, it's got to be readable. Um, we, uh, the framework we chose doesn't really give us a whole lot of those features out of the box. It doesn't even give us um, very much for tab key keyboard navigation, um, which we usually group with accessibility features um, by default, but it does give us a really good framework for implementing that stuff. Um, so we obviously do now have keyboard navigation throughout the desktop client, throughout the settings window. Um, and we test that with um, several different screen readers on Windows. We test with VoiceOver on Mac and we test with Orca on Linux. Um, every time we implement new UI components, we test it thoroughly to make sure that everything's read properly by screen readers, that we haven't left anything out, um, that every little detail is accessible, like seeing moving tiles around so you can customize the UI the same way, seeing the data in the graphs, um, seeing pop-up tips that you'd normally see by pointing to with the mouse. Um, some of those things were kind of challenging to figure out how to model those for a screen reader to understand. Um, but I think we've come up with really good solutions in all those cases. Um, there's no substitute though for working with the users that use these tools on a daily basis. Um, Cause I, I spent a lot of time trying to learn them but it's all sort of second hand to me. I had to learn them as I was working on them. Um, so we take user feedback in this regard very seriously and whenever we can find users that would like to test these features with us or that have suggestions about how this could be more accessible, uh, feel more native, um, we put those onto our roadmap and we get those improvements into the client. Um, and there are a few users in particular that we've worked with extensively on this feature specifically. Thanks to those users for providing that feedback and helping improve the PIA desktop client. Um, another feature to talk about, all PIA desktop clients recently added WireGuard support. Why should people check it out and consider using it? Uh, WireGuard is designed to be a lot more efficient and streamlined than OpenVPN. And we've seen that reflected in the feedback that we get from users that that really is happening in the real world. Um, integrating that into PIA was a great experience. Uh, WireGuard, unlike OpenVPN, is built a lot more like a toolbox than one monolithic solution. So it gives us lots of good tools that each do a little thing well in particular, and it's up to us, the application developers, to put those together in a way that makes sense. Um, that gives us a lot of flexibility in PIA to provide better features like seamless roaming, which allows you to move between local networks without using your VPN connection. Um, on Windows in particular, we've also seen a lot of improvements from the uh, kernel driver that is used with WireGuard. It was written by the WireGuard developers um, called WinTun. Um, we've seen a lot of improvements in the, that driver over the tap adapter, which we use historically. Um, and OpenVPN is also now adding support for WinTun. We hope to bring that to a, a future release too. So you mentioned um, split tunneling as your favorite feature earlier. Could you explain a little bit of how it works uh, in the PIA desktop app? Yeah, split tunneling in the PIA desktop app allows you to choose which apps do or do not use the VPN. Um, users have been requesting this for years since VPNs existed, I think. Um, our split tunnel feature can create rules for applications, either setting those applications to bypass the VPN or to only use the VPN. Um, and we can also create rules to bypass specific IP ranges. Um, we see users use that for uh, situations like having nested local networks where you need to be able to reach the outer network from an inner one. Um, they can set a, a, a rule for that range to bypass the VPN for that. Um, we also have a bunch of ancillary features like uh, choosing the default behavior for apps that aren't listed. Um, so you can configure that to act as more of an opt-in or an opt-out basis. Um, you can choose, I want all apps to not use the VPN by default and just opt these specific apps into the VPN, or you can do it the other way around. We've also recently added some additional features like uh, DNS choices on Windows and Linux. You can choose whether you want DNS to split like the app rules, uh, which improves experiences with streaming services and other services that might geolocate using DNS. Um, or you can choose that you want all DNS to go into the tunnel, um, if you don't need those things and you prefer all DNS to be routed protected through the VPN tunnel. 
Um, on Linux, we also have some specific features like um, a selection for routed packets, which users have been asking for to control containers like Docker um, or VMs using bridge networking. Um, that was something that users have been asking for, and now we have that you're able to control whether that traffic goes into the VPN or not into the VPN. Um, we support both methods on Linux. So um, either your own personal or one that you've come across that a PIA customer is using, but what's your favorite example use of the split tunneling feature? I think my favorite use of split tunneling is when you use it as a per app kill switch. Um, users have been requesting this for a long time too, um, and we were finally able to accomplish this by providing the only VPN mode for individual apps. Um, users didn't necessarily want to block the entire internet connection if we lost the VPN connection. They just wanted to block specific apps that they might do sensitive activities with. Um, so for example, if you do some sensitive internet browsing that you want to ensure goes through the VPN, um, you can pick a browser and set that browser to only VPN in the desktop client, even if the VPN is your default choice in the desktop client. Um, and if your VPN connection is lost or if you um, disconnect, you can have just that browser blocked from the internet. So your other stuff can continue to go on if you want it to, um, but that browser will be disconnected so that it isn't able to send that traffic over the regular internet. Um, and we don't have to terminate the app to do that either. Um, as soon as you're connected, the, again, the app is still up. It's still able to reach the internet through the VPN. Um, and we also set up firewall rules to ensure that nothing leaks while the connection is transitioning. That's awesome. Could you explain how port forwarding works in the PIA desktop client? Yeah, port forwarding on, in PIA allows your client to accept incoming connections from a specific port on the VPN IP address. Normally, when you're using a VPN, it's primarily for outbound connections. You're able to make an outbound connection, it goes through the VPN tunnel, um, and you're able to reach something on the other side on the internet. Um, port forwarding allows you to accept incoming connections from other people on the internet through a specific port. Uh, in the desktop app, once you turn on port forwarding, that port you get will be shown in the UI, and you can also get it from the CLI, which users frequently ask for for scripting. Under the hood, we have a REST API that we use to get that port and then bind it on the VPN server that you're connected to. Um, and if you'd like to see how that works, you should check out our uh, manual connections repository on GitHub, which uh, Gyorgy has been working on recently, and he's done some amazing work creating scripts for all of those protocols. Um, we've also seen a number of users fork that repo and extend it so you can get support for manual connections with port forwarding on platforms like FreeBSD or routers, which we um, don't always have direct support for. Um, you mentioned the CLI. Could you explain about the command line interface? Uh, what kind of cool things can that be used to accomplish? Yeah, we've seen users do all kinds of things with their CLI. Um, some stuff that we had expected based on user requests and some things that we had, didn't really see coming at all. Um, one of the most common reasons that this had been requested in the past uh, was to get the VPN IP or the forwarded port in scripts. Um, of course, you could get it from the UI, but if you had a script running to configure something or other whenever the VPN connection came up, there wasn't really a good way to plug that port or IP into the script. Um, now the script's able to get it from the CLI very easily. Um, so we've had users integrate that into third-party applications that way. Um, we'd also had users ask for the ability to use global hotkeys to connect and disconnect the VPN, um, which now you can do with uh, whatever platform uh, hotkey support you have by binding those keys to a CLI command. Um, and you can bind any functionality that's expressed through the CLI, which is most parts of the client, and we're always working on adding the remaining parts um, to hotkeys or any integration you want to use. Um, we also had a user on GitHub that made a web interface to PIA Desktop, which none of us really saw coming. That's pretty creative. I thought that was pretty neat. Nice. That's very neat and creative. Uh, um, could you tell us about the next-gen VPN network? Yeah, our next-gen network is a totally new infrastructure that we built from the ground up for improved performance, uh, more regional support, and as the groundwork for all the future improvements we're working on for our service. Um, we built brand new servers using much larger connections and more efficient software designs. Um, they've deployed them into a lot more regions than we used to have in the past. Um, and our ops team has done an amazing job with this. Um, they continue to impress me with the increased velocity they're able to maintain with the new infrastructure, which is working great for them. Um, they're able to, they've been able to make some of the functionalities that were not 100% reliable in the past much more solid on the new network. Um, and we've got all kinds of projects on a roadmap built on this foundation that I'm very excited about. Um, speaking of new projects and whatnot, 
what kind of new features in the PI desktop client uh, might you be able to hint to that viewers can look forward to? One of the features I'm personally looking forward to is some increased platform support. Um, we're working on bringing more CPU architecture support to all the platforms we support for desktop, uh, which we continue to get requests from users for. Um, this is something I've also been wanting myself recently as I get into some more of these like ARM Linux boards and things like that. Um, we've been working on that internally for a while and it's it's getting pretty close to being released. I mean, I'm really excited to see what kinds of devices people end up putting PA desktop on when that's out. I'm also looking forward to that. So lastly, while we've talked about a lot of technical things today, uh, let's end on a much more general note. What is something that you're looking forward to, either at work or in your personal life? You know, I'm looking forward to uh, some of the future projects we have at PIA where we're, we're starting to branch out beyond the VPN client itself. Um, we've been looking at the architecture and the stuff that we've built in desktop and we're realizing that there are a lot of new and creative ways we could apply a lot of those pieces. Um, and there's a lot more to privacy secure and security than just being VPN. Um, and I'm really excited about exploring some of those new projects and building that up with the amazing team that we have working on the PIA desktop client. Awesome. That's it for today. Thanks, Jonathan, for joining us. To our viewers, if you'd like to check out the PI Desktop Client for Windows, Mac, or Linux, please check out the links below. Thank you for watching this Private Internet Access special feature. Make sure you subscribe to see more interviews like this, as well as the top privacy news stories from around the world. Until next time.